Hello, my friends. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the patch tool in Affinity Photo. Um, the patch tool is one simple way that you can, um, not only one simple way, but also a, one simple tool that you can use to edit and soften and smooth skin and get rid of blemishes. So this photo right here is a photo that I took about maybe four weeks now um, since I've taken this photo, but this is a photo I've, I've taken with my creative team. Uh, this is our model Sierra and um, just concept that we, we thought about and stuff like that. So this is the image that you're seeing on screen, but uh, let us let me zoom right into the photos so you can see what we're gonna work on here. So we're gonna work on the forehead specifically. Um, I've spent about five minutes just removing the blemishes. This is the after photo. And uh, let me scroll back over here. Scroll back over here. And this is the before photo right there. So uh, before, after, that's what we're gonna be working on, okay? So uh, let's move over into Affinity Photo. And here's the photo just pulled up in Affinity Photo. As with all the Affinity Photos, until I actually record the YouTube video showing how to import images, best practices on doing that, uh, pros and cons, all that kind of stuff. Um, as on, on, until that, rec that, that video is recorded, I'm just gonna just assume that all that stuff is taken care of. This is just the default setup in Affinity Photo. I just load the photo in. Um, completely standard settings, haven't changed anything. So what I'm gonna show you guys right now though, however, is how far I was able to get after five minutes of using this tool that I'm gonna show you guys how to use right now. So this is just before and after, you can see exactly where the blemishes were removed um, and how far I was able to get in literally five minutes. Okay, so uh, with all further ado, let's get started. So we're gonna hit that plus key and we're gonna open up a new layer. Default layer, I'm not changing anything. So literally default layer, same thing that you guys will press once you hit the uh, add layer button, new layer. Um, we're gonna go over here into our brush panel, um, our healing brush type panel, and we're gonna go down here to the patch tool. So with the patch tool, best practices and how to set it up if you're gonna use it non-destructively, uh, you're gonna need to go over here into the source mode and make sure current and below is selected. If that's not selected, uh, you're gonna be in a situation where um, if you're editing on the on that top layer, that layer that we're using right now, it's not gonna pull any information because it needs a layer below it to actually be able to pull that information from. Um, as far as other settings here in the uh, patch tool window tool, uh, the tool window, uh, we're not gonna change anything. Um, it's gonna be set to new. It's not gonna be set to add, subtract, or intersect. Uh, source mode, texture only, transparent, transparent are just default settings. I'm not gonna change any of that stuff. Uh, one caveat with using this tool, however, if you um, say, for example, I patch over and I do this, you notice how the rotation and the scale in terms of percentages are going to change. Um, if you accidentally touch any of those adjustments, uh, rotation nodes, um, this is exactly what's going to happen. So if that ever happens to you, go into the layers panel um, or the brush preset or brush settings panel um, in the patch window, and then make sure you're setting the rotation back to zero and you're setting the scale back to 100%. Uh, if you don't do that, you're not going to get the results that we're, we're going to be showcasing right now how to do. Uh, you're going to have massive issues because the scale is going to be weird and the rotation of how it's actually um, pulling pixels and, and filling them into the, the selection is going to be all messed up. So um, without further ado, let's uh, start stop talking and just get right into the content, right? So let's, uh, let's start up here. So with the patch tool, um, basically what you're going to do, and I'll showcase this to you guys right now, you're gonna be drawing over an area that you want the patch tool to um, actually uh, select as a sample, and then you're going to basically tap and hold to an area that you'd rather that uh, the selected area look like, or looks like. And um, that's literally all you're doing. So you're telling, you're telling Affinity Photo, hey, this is the area that I'm trying to like, get rid of. Um, I'd rather it look like this area over here could you like fix that for me? Um, that's it, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, that's all you're doing. So you're just gonna, oh, I, I made that mistake. You see what I'm talking about right here? I, I didn't even mean to actually hit that, but um, yeah, just set it back to those values and you'll be good to go. Um, you guys will notice as I'm doing this, and I'm gonna kind of speed up so we can just get this done here in a couple of minutes. Um, you guys will notice that I'm zoomed in pretty tight on the image. Uh, my typical practice when I'm doing retouching and, and face, editing, um, skin smoothing, is that I always try to zoom in as, as much as possible. I'm not saying that you need to go to one-to-one -to -one pixel 
layer like so all the way here you don't need to go that far you could if you really wanted to get super detailed um, but you don't need to go that far that's kind of that's a little bit unnecessary especially if we if you're just posting on Instagram you really don't need to go that far however the closer that you do zoom in um, the better that this particular tool is going to be able to sample and then ultimately the the tighter the selection from the sample that you're using is is going to be so and the reason why that's important is because this tool has a tendency of getting very blurry if you're using a large selection. So right now I'm not using a selection that's like this big, for example, I'm using selections that are this big. So you're not gonna see how blurry that it gets. It's just kind of the algorithm that both Affinity Photo and Photoshop does when it comes to the patch tool. Um, it's just very blurry. So with that, you wanna zoom in as tight as possible to basically reduce some of the blur that's going to naturally happen with using this tool and there's quite a bit of blur um, I would say outside of outside of that caveat to using it and and some of the zoom settings things of that nature that you guys need to know kind of going into it um, this tool is best used for longer blemishes the scale is totally messed up I was wondering why I was doing that it's and it's uh, this is one of the things I don't particularly like about this tool this is part of the reason I don't use this tool every single time I'm retouching I literally only use it for long long wrinkles stray hairs I do not use this tool otherwise but for the purposes of this video I'm just showing you guys what's possible with the patch tool and how far you guys can get in a couple of minutes we've uh, gotten pretty far so far but we do still have a pretty long way to go to be fair and it's been about three minutes now um, but I guess best practices when it comes to using patch tool so we can kind of cover some of that stuff there uh, as, as I said before, make sure you're zoomed in pretty close so that if and when it does become blurry, that blur is not something that's gonna be noticeable at this zoom level here. If you're if you're doing a patches this big and you go like that, that's gonna mess up this entire area. Um, that actually wasn't that bad, but you're losing all that texture, which is why you wanna zoom in really close. Outside of that, this, this tool is best for long wrinkles or long blemishes that would be kind of tedious to get rid of with the in-painting or the healing or the spot healing brushes, which we've covered in, in previous videos. But for the most part, the patch tool works better in these long blemishes. So try to, if you're gonna use this tool, try to focus on using it for those particular issues that you're having in your, your skin smoothing and your retouching process. Outside of that, if you really wanted to use this as the sole tool, just, just zoom in. Uh, just zoom in and be careful with the selections and as you're if you're getting to situations where it's starting to get blurry and you're starting to lose detail um, which is that that's going to be loss of detail right there I'm not going to fix it but nonetheless um, if you're starting to run into those issues then just know that uh, it can be fixed with other tools as well or you can redo the selection and, and try again it's not really a huge deal just as with all uh, healing brush tools and healing tools in both Affinity Photo and in Photoshop, they're all bad with edges. Every single one of the tools I've showcased so far on our YouTube channel are bad with edges. Um, besides one, which actually hasn't been showcased yet. Stay tuned for that one. But uh, outside of that, all the tutorials that we posted so far up until this point in history are bad with edges. History, uh, the uh, patch tool, healing brush, spot healing brush, in painting tool, those are all bad with edges. Um, they're just terrible. Uh, the main way to fix that is going to be a tool that we're going to cover in a future video, which is going to be the clone, clone brush, clone tool that will fix all the issues that you're having with edges. So best practices when using the patch tool specifically on edges, that would just be to zoom in as close as possible to the edge. So if I'm like right here and I'm trying to get rid of this blemish, blemish right here, I would be like right there and I would do that. I would not do this over here. That would be a bad idea. That would be an awful awful idea do not do it that way definitely zoom super close in and then get to a pixel level and then fix it that way and you'll be fine it won't have any issues but that's basically the best practice for all the tools that I was talking about before same exact process you can just zoom in really far uh, affinity photo has very great mag magnification so it's not really an issue to zoom that far in you never really have to but if you're on an edge that's kind of the time that you it makes sense to do that um, and I'm gonna spend just another maybe a minute here. We've we've covered pretty much what we need to cover. Um, as you can see, I'm totally just speeding up. I'm going super ham right now. I'm not even really focusing on the uh, loss of detail that's gonna happen as I as I do it from such a large 
sample selection area. And it does get blurry. There are ways to fix the blur. Uh, we haven't covered those yet, so, so we have not covered those, those techniques yet. That will come as well. Stay tuned. I will cover that for you guys. Um, but yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, and, well let, me, let me do this as well since it's just an easy one to get rid of for the most part. Yeah, okay, well, let's show you guys before and after. There's kind of a little issue right here in that select section, but I'm not gonna fix that. Um, so it's been about five minutes, maybe six minutes at this point, and this is how far we're getting. Obviously, I'm talking in this video as well, so there's that. I am talking, so I'm not totally 100% focused on this, but in five minutes, this is what we're able to get. Literally with one tool, I didn't change any settings. You just set it once. You can make it a preset if you want. Set it and literally forget about it. That's it. Just set it and forget it. Um, and then as far as best practices, same things I mentioned before, zoom in. Um, zoom in, make sure your rotation's at zero, your scale's at 100%. Just be careful because it will blur. Be careful on edges especially. Uh, don't make the samples bigger than, the sample selection bigger than they need to be. Um, outside of that, it will work pretty well. It will be kind of blurry and we will uh, cover how to fix that specific issue. But um, this is kind of what the patch tool is capable of, guys. Uh, for me personally, I, like I said before, I fix I fix wrinkles and I fix stray hairs utilizing this specific technique. I do not do this for full re retouching of images. I use the healing brush and impainting tool because it's much, much faster. But if you want to do this technique and this technique only, this is what you could do, yes. Uh, it would be a little bit time consuming and tedious to do that. Do it this way, but it does work. You get the same exact results. My only function and goal is just to kind of show you guys what is possible so you can make the be best educated decision that you want, that best suits your, your specific technique, your workflow, uh, what tools that you personally like to, you like to use and gravitate to. That's my only goal. I, I don't have any other goals here besides just to educate you guys and help you out, right? So, um, but that kind of wraps up today's video. That it's just really short, sweet, right to the point. Um, just kind of helping you guys just understand what this can do in a 50 photo. It is the same exact result as Photoshop from my experience. That is all I've seen. It's the same exact result. But, um, you know, as with all videos, guys, hit that subscribe button. What's up? Sub it. Um, and, you know, while you're over there, hey, hey, you know, come over on this side. And hit that like button, man. Come on, hit that like button, man. You know you like it, brother. Okay, but um, <laughs> I know you do like it. Hey, what's up, man? It's cool. I know you like this, man. It's cool. Um, but uh, that wraps up today's, today's video. As always, if you have a comment, a question, a concern, a recommendation as far as content you'd like to see, if I have the skill set and, and our team has the skill set to do something and, and generate some content around that, hey, we'd love to. Uh, absolutely. We'll, we'll put it in the queue and we'll get it taken care of, no problem. Um, shoot me a message if you have any questions or concerns. You can reach out to uh, myself personally or through our brand. Uh, just send us a message, man. Message if you guys have any questions or concerns. We are open to feedback. If you have any, if you're seeing anything that's a little weird, be like, hey, I don't like the way you talked about that. That was actually inaccurate. Um, by all means, leave me a comment. Let me know. I would love to learn. Uh, this is a learning process for everyone. So until next time, my friends, peace out.